Disney released a theme song for an upcoming show called Primos, which set the internet off. If you know nothing about what's going on, I got you. And I brought along my friend Crit to help explain everything. Oh yeah. Deadline breaks the story of Disney announcing the premiere of Primos, an original comedy animation series produced by Natasha Klein, who worked on Big City Greens, South Park, and the Lego Ninjago movie. When her 12 cousins, Primos in Spanish, move in for the summer, they help her discover just what it is. Tater's aspirations and larger-than-life imagination are seen via entries in her super-secret diary, which turns her deepest thoughts into grandiose animation sequences. Disney would release a theme song in anticipation for the show on June 13th, and in just under a week, the show has already caught backlash for a wide variety of reasons that Crit and I will discuss in detail. I'm gonna make this very clear from the jump. I do not speak for all Latin American and Hispanic people. However, as a Boricua, I have yet to personally meet anyone of that descent that does not hate the term Latinx. For context, Latinx is the term used in the series Pitch Bible. It's an attempt at introducing a gender neutral term in a gendered language through the most awkward way possible by inserting the hardest consonant of the alphabet after another consonant. Not only that, Latinx just sounds like an American word pretending to be Spanish. If you're looking for a more proper term for Spanish individuals that don't go by a specific gender, the term Latine fits perfectly fine. It follows the rules of Spanish etymology, E is a gender neutral letter compared to O or A and can actually be pronounced in the Spanish language. Now on to the topic of representation, Primos is trying to be a force for representation in the modern era. While we have Spanish characters in prominent positions like Luz, Libby, and Casey, the only cartoons of recent memory that have had fully Spanish casts are Victor and Valentino and the Casa Grandes. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and this doesn't excuse the nonsense that came about from the first hints of the show. Possibly one of the biggest aspects is that the main character, Tater, within the theme song, uses a grammatically incorrect phrase, Oye Primos. The correct usage is, Oigan Primos. As the latter uses a plural word, and the former, Oye, is used for singular terms. This, alongside the depictions of the family, have brought up the discussion on if this show has stereotypical intentions or genuine intentions, with a decent amount of people feeling uncomfortable with even the names of the characters, like Kukita, which sounds very close to words that aren't exactly in line with Disney's family-friendly image. Now, I am not of Latin American descent, so I went to the creator herself and listened to what she had to say. She speaks about growing up in an extended Mexican-American family where she personally did not speak a lot of Spanish, but connected with her Spanish side of the family nonetheless. Well, uh, as I mentioned, my grandmother was a huge presence in my life. She most spoke Spanish. That didn't make me not connect with her. She was, we were very, very close. And even though I couldn't understand what she was saying all the time, like I knew that she just had nothing but love for me. In this, she wanted to create an experience for other Latin American children to relate to where if you feel like you're in between two cultures and you don't feel connected enough or anything along the nature of that, that is a valid and common experience to have. People have been giving this show flack as being loud house but Mexican or ripping off the Casa Grandes. But for my Spanish viewers out there, you all know this. I grew up the same, but that's just how some Spanish families operate. Oftentimes, you'll have a big chunk of the family living under one roof, if not having a big chunk of the family visiting often. Also bear in mind that Primos is based off of Natasha Klein's childhood. In reality, I, I actually have 28 cousins, so the series only focuses on 12, just to kind of like whittle everything down. Being in Los Angeles, I think it's very common to have bicultural families or even biracial families, and all of that is showcased in my actual cousins. That's definitely what we were trying to, to portray in the series. It feels unfair to put the show down for these comparisons or saying it's ripping off these shows when this is the creator's lived experience, along with the lived experience of a lot of Spanish people. It's unfortunate to say, but some stereotypes are based on truth. Mirna Velasco, who voices the main character Tater, responded to criticisms surrounding the mispronunciations of Spanish, and her counter-argument veered left very fast, with claims of the only reason that Mexicans speak Spanish and that they're not Native Americans are because the conquistadors colonized and forced their language onto them. The Spanish language language is not a Latin American language. It's a language the Spanish conquistadors forced upon Latin American people. The only reason we're Latin people and not Native American people is because of that distinction. You know, growing up, I remember watching early Nickelodeon promos around Butch Hartman or Doug Lawrence and seeing them speak about the show indirectly to me. I never once as a kid thought that in about a decade, these same people and nearly everyone else who works on any animated show would just be a tweet away. I noticed that a lot of staff members who have public accounts don't separate their work from their life and their beliefs, which means that in many cases, you can follow a creator whose work you enjoy and end up reading about their political beliefs or their takes in the industry as well. 
Personally, I don't see a problem with running an account where you don't separate the art from the artist, but I genuinely think that when it comes to this response, this is one of the examples of how this can go wrong. We're trying to make a good show for kids. For kids that feel left out, for kids that are different, for kids who don't have a full grasp on any language, no matter where they live. And if you're gonna be mad at that, mm, I don't know, be mad then. Towards the end of her response, she speaks about simply wanting to make a cartoon for kids who didn't have this kind of representation growing up. But the issue is that what precedes this perfectly valid claim is a red herring about Native Americans and colonization. This isn't to say that everyone who had criticisms towards the show were constructive, but politicizing the argument of well-meaning people who have seen bad representation within animation in the past to then hide behind the think of the children shield just seems a little irrational. Not only this, but responding to the internet by saying that they're wrong virtually has never resulted in a positive outcome. Trying to see the best in Myrna, you can argue that this is her account, and if she wants to vent or respond, that she can. But using her own words against her, if all of this is truly for the children, there would have been better ways to address that criticism without indirectly painting Latin American people as victims of colonizers. Some people would argue, me, I'm some people, that Myrna did more damage to the show's reputation than the creator, who was mostly staying quiet about the whole debacle, and she was more concerned about owning people who were overreacting rather than actually addressing the issue. There has been the argument that this is to generate publicity via outrage marketing, and while shows like Velma and Teen Titans Go leaned into the hate, I would like to believe that this isn't the case here. When we hear from other people, both people within the industry that are talking about the show or people who are working on the show, they're not speaking about the facts or even leaning into the fact that people may hate the show, but rather that they're proud of the experience on working on the show or of of the people who are working on the show. Basically what I'm saying is that so far I have no reason to believe that Myrna's response is representative of her team. This appears to be just one person speaking one person's thoughts and until other people share the same sentiment publicly, I won't just assume that this is indicative of the entire staff. A tweet has been making its rounds where Myrna speaks about being grateful towards her family because they are the main reason she is able to work on her dream job. And had they stayed in their quote shithole country, that would have been possible. There's a few responses to this, such as A, people believing that Myrna herself is insulting Mexico, B, that Myrna sees her opportunity in America as a means to an end, and C, people like her shouldn't be hired anywhere. While I don't know Myrna's intentions, I'm not trying to speak on behalf of her, I do know a few things. For one, she's most likely referencing a comment made by the former president of the United States, implying that she doesn't believe it herself and is saying it sarcastically, which is hinted at in the hashtag. All of this reads to me as a game of of broken telephone. For one, people are conflating Tater's voice actor and the creator of the show to be the same person. They are not the same people. And again, until the creator comes out and reacts in some way to what Myrna says, I just don't think it's upon me to assume her intent. Secondly, people are claiming that had the creator came out and said that the Spanish is bad on purpose, that none of this would have happened, or that this would have helped in any way. It would have happened regardless, because the platform that Natasha used to speak about the intent of her characters, as well as a lot of other things, it garnered less than 2,000 views at the time of writing this, compared to the near 7,000 views on the Primo's theme song, which was posted on Disney's YouTube page. So by that logic and that hypothetical, less than 1%, literally less than half of 1% of people would have known about her intent before the show came out. Also, I don't know about anyone else's household, but my family and the kids that I grew up around don't casually watch interviews from the team to know the intent of each show. They just watch the show. Also, also, this take is implying that Natasha would have had to have known and could predict the criticisms to respond to them preemptively, which is easy said than done. Had she responded to criticisms that no one made, for example, then the criticism would become that she's deflecting blame on her show by responding to criticisms that no one said. You can't predict something that you can't even conceptualize because you don't know how people are going to respond to it. More importantly, we never asked this about any other show. The only reason that this is happening is because of a choice in the theme song, and that's the only material that's released yet. Like, it's so weird to me. So many people are saying what the show should have been, but it's not even out yet. If 
feels unfair to say things should be said or done a certain way for Spanish people when the creator is telling her story about how she grew up. For all we know, and based on her words this is probably true, she probably did grow up shouting oye primos. I can tell you firsthand that my experiences growing up did not involve learning any Spanish, and I've been called a fake Puerto Rican once or twice because I don't speak Spanish. But that shouldn't invalidate my heritage or who or where my family comes from. Did we even discuss the quality of the theme song? Because honestly it's not all that. The main VA singing kind of feels stilted, I'm sure she's a better actress than a singer, coupled with the facial expressions on Tater making her look pretty uninterested. The animation itself is pretty standard for television, nothing about it really stands out. The lyrics don't really stand out either, the most interesting thing about it being the broken Spanish that started the whole controversy. The character designs are also a point of contention, as while some look fine and actually kind of cute, others look... my god. God. So much time has been spent surrounded by controversies that we haven't even really taken the time to properly look at the show itself, which in my opinion looks a little boring. In my defense of the show, let me be clear, if you watch just a theme song or maybe you saw Mern's response or heard about it in passing, it's completely understandable to have a bad taste in your mouth. I'm not saying that you can't have a bad opinion about the show. I see why it garnered so much hate and there's nothing wrong with not wanting to see a show based on its promo material. Plus the voice actor making that response did add fuel to the fire. But it's just a shame that a lot of people, if they do go into the show, they gotta now align with the side rather than seeing if it's actually good or not, which is the whole point of all of this. Is it entertaining or is it not? Now it's less about if a kid's show is good and it's more about if you care about Latin America or not. Personally, I think it's going to be a wacky, quirky kid in a big family kind of show and I might like it, I might not. Whether I do or not, at least you now know why everyone appears to hate Primos.